Hi, and welcome to this technical presentation series on renewable energy studies. In this video, I will discuss the doubly fed and action generator wind turbine control. Doubly fed and action generator wind turbines, which are generally called DFIG wind turbines, have the stator of an induction generator directly connected to the grid and the one rotor of this machine connected to the grid through an AC-DC-AC converter. This converter system consists of two voltage source converters, the rotor side converter and the grid side converter. Although not shown in this figure, a line inductor called choke filter and a shunt harmonic AC filter are used on the grid side converter to improve power quality. A crowbar is used to protect the rotor side converter against overcurrent and the DC capacitor against overvoltage. During crowbar ignition, the rotor side converter is blocked and the induction generator consumes reactive power. To avoid the crowbar ignition during faults, the DC resistive chopper is widely used to limit the DC voltage. This slide is from a previous video, as a reminder. The turbine controllers in the park receive their control references from the power plant controller, also called PPC. In the case of the EMTP 4.1 generic model, only the park reactive power control loop of the PPC is modeled. To control the reactive power, the PPC sends a voltage deviation reference to all turbine controllers. By default, the controllers control the voltage at 1 per unit. If the PPC commands more reactive power, it sends a positive voltage deviation reference and the converters end up producing more reactive power. Here is the control and protection diagram of the DFIG wind turbine. The sample signals, which are the voltage and current on each side of the converter, are put in per unit and filtered. The input measuring filters are low-pass type. The compute variables blocks compute the variables used by the control and protection systems. In this block, you will find a PLL, which is an algorithm which will determine the voltage angle and frequency and help to achieve the transformation from the ABC domain to the DQ0 domain, which is used for control purpose. The pitch control block limits the mechanical power extracted from the wind by increasing the pitch angle when the wind speed is above its rated. The protection system block contains cut-in and cut-off speed relays, low voltage and over voltage relays, machine side converter and grid side converter overcurrent protections, and DC resistive chopper control. The LVRT and OVRT functions are in this block. The EMTP 4.1 generic model is controlled using vector control techniques in the DQ0 domain. This control type is the most commonly used by wind turbine manufacturers in the industry. Some of its big advantage is that it allows decoupled control of real and reactive powers. For example, for DFIG, the control power is controlled by the Q axis of the rotor side converter, and the reactive power is only controlled by the D axis of the same controller. Another advantage of this control type is that when the system is balanced, the D and Q axis currents and voltage are constant in steady state. They are therefore easier to control than sinusoidal quantities. On the machine side, the DQ transformation angle follows the induction machine flux. The Q component corresponds to the real power and the D component to the reactive power. Therefore, by controlling the Q axis current, the converter controls the machine electrical power. A two-level control is used and built with an outer loop and an inner loop. The reference of the outer loop is the active power and it produces the reference of the inner loop, the Q axis current reference. The outer loop reference is provided by the maximum power point tracking, or MPPT, and is set to get the maximum power out of the wind. This algorithm uses the blade rotation speed and some optimization curves to find the optimal power available. This device will be discussed in details in another video. The inner loop, which is the fastest one, produces the Q axis voltage reference to follow the Q axis current reference produced by the outer loop. Before being used by the inner loop, the current reference is limited by the IDQ limiter block, so the converter does not exceed its current capability 
which could cause hardware damage. The limiter function will be explained later on on this presentation. The gain of the outer loop are calculated based on user-defined parameters as shown here. The typical time constant of this loop is 0.1 second. The d-axis loop controls the d-axis rotor voltage in order to follow the stator voltage reference sent by the PPC for the park reactive power control. The outer loop produces a Q-axis current reference, which is also limited by the limiter and sent to the inner loop, which commands the D-axis voltage. The outer loop here is a proportional controller where the gain is set by user in the mask. The inner loops control the converter voltage to follow the references of the outer loops. Their gains, which are the same for D and Q-axis, are calculated as shown here, using the machine parameters and following the internal model control method. Here, at the top, you can see the simplified and action machine equations for both axes. The variation of the stator flux on both axes is neglected here. Once the internal model control method is applied, the equations are like here. You can see the definition of each parameter below. In the generic model mask, User can set the rise time, which determines the inner loop speed. It is typically set to 20 milliseconds. The function of the grid side converter is to maintain the DC bus voltage at its nominal value. It operates at unit power factor, except during severe fault conditions. Its DQ transformation angle follows the voltage between the choke RL filter and the converter transformer. Since the voltage is 90 degrees ahead of the flux, the D component corresponds to the real power and the Q component corresponds to the reactive power. Here again, two level control loops are utilized. On the D axis, the outer loop regulates the DC bus voltage to its nominal value. The output of this loop is the D axis current reference, which will be the reference for the inner loop. The inner loop which is the fastest one, produces the D-axis voltage reference to follow the current reference. Before being used by the inner loop, the current reference is limited by the IDQ limiter block, so the converter does not exceed its current capabilities, which could cause hardware damage. The limiter function will be explained later on in this presentation. The gains of the outer loop PI controller for the D-axis are calculated based on the DC bus capacitance. The equations used are explained here. For the grid side converter, the gain of the inner loops depend on the total impedance seen by the converter. The transfer function is shown here, where R and L are the resistances and inductances of the filter choke, the converter transformer, the park transformer, and the grid Thevenin impedance combined. In the generic model mask, Users can set the rise time, which determines the inner loop speed. It is typically set to 10 milliseconds. The voltage control is at the converter terminal, but the voltage measured is after the choke filter. Therefore, and similarly as the machine side converter, a feedforward compensation is done before putting the converter voltage reference back to the ABC domain. Let's now explain the limiter device of the rotor side converter. During normal operations, the controller gives the priority to the active current. The wind turbines are equipped with an FRT function to fulfill the grid code requirements regarding voltage support. The FRT function is activated when the voltage deviation is above a user-defined threshold and is disactivated when the deviation goes back below another threshold. When the FRT function is active for LVRT or HVRT, the rotor side controller gives the priority to the reactive current. Similar to the rotor side converter, the priority is given to the grid side converter reactive current when FRT function is activated. In order to improve the high voltage right through HVRT capability of the DFIG wind turbine, Reactive current contribution of the grid side converter is also used. The grid side converter reactive current contribution is achieved by LVRT boost and HVRT boost blocks 
during low voltage and high voltage conditions. During LVRT, the grid side converter does not contribute before the maximum rotor side contribution is reached. Then, it starts contributing with the proportional controllers. The HVRT, also called OVRT, like over voltage right through, is activated when the voltage goes above a certain threshold. All the FRT threshold can be found in the converter control data tab, as well as the parameters required by the inner and outer control loops. The PWM and sampling rate inputs are important only if the converter is modeled in detail with IGBTs. They are not in the case of average value model. The difference between average value model and detail model of inverter will be explained in another video. The type of filter can be varied. It can have an influence on certain studies like subsynchronous control interaction, but are of minor importance for most studies, so you don't really have to worry about it. The external system equivalent is important to set up as, like I explained a few slides ago, the grid side converter inner loop gains are calculated using this information. The turbine might become unstable if this data isn't set properly. Let's now quickly demonstrate the model in the MTP. For the demonstration, I will use the example from the default EMTP library. In this example, a DFIG wind park is connected to a small transmission system. Several false scenarios are set up. Let's exclude all of them for now. If we go inside the model, the park sub-circuit can be visualized. I recall that this is an aggregated version. It has been described in the first videos of this series. The control functions are all gathered inside this block. For this example, let's demonstrate the wind variation and its impact on the power generation of the park. The wind is set up here and is constant by default. If one wants to vary the wind, you simply have to modify this circuit. The first thing is to unlock the circuit. Simply try to move something and click on unlock. And then use the control library to modify the circuit. We can, for example, use a sum. And then apply, for example, a wind drop as a step. For that, we can use a signal generator. By default, the wind is set to 11.24 meters per second. Let's simulate a wind speed drop of 2 meters per second. The width of this step will be infinite. Initially, the step is at zero, and we will apply the step after one second of simulation. In fact, the sign here should be positive because here we have a minus. So let's visualize the different current references in the control. So we go inside the control block on the rotor side controller. Here we have compute variables where you, you can find the PLL and the transformation from ABC to DQ0. And here you can find the control. The D and Q reference before and after limiter can be found here. So let's place a scope. Again, the circuit should be unlocked before. During the wind change, we will also visualize the power going out of the park. Before running the time domain simulation, let's run the load flow. During the load flow, the software will utilize the wind speed and the Q control parameter to determine the active and reactive power of the park. The wind speed will be transformed into an active power. The results of the load flow are displayed here. So right now, the park is generating 67.54 megawatts and 0 megavolt. Let's now run the time domain simulation. We will visualize the result with scope view. 
The first two scopes will be the rotor side controller D and Q current references. And the next scopes will be the park active and reactive power. What we can see here, before 0.4 seconds, the park is initializing. So, as a reminder of the first video, the park is actually an ideal voltage source. At this point here, the initialization is finished and a small transcend can be experienced. Then, before one second, the park is in steady state. At one second, we apply the step change of speed. Of course, a more realistic wind speed change can be applied. In this case, it's a step. When the step is applied, we can see that the Q and the D and Q references are changing, and especially the Q reference, which is the one controlling the, the active power. And following the Q reference, we can see that the real power is also dropping with the speed variation. It will eventually reach a new steady state. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any question, please leave a comment on the video or contact us at info at emtp.com. You can also find us on LinkedIn. Thanks again for watching. Have a good day. Bye.